Hi everybody, today's focus, I'm gonna test which ones of these fruits or vegetables have pesticides on them. A little bit ago, I've tested various methods to see if we could remove bacteria from lettuce. And during that video, I received a lot of requests to test removal of pesticides. Those requests came from A95037MH, Noah JB, Not a Brick in the Wall, Ladybug Sarah, Kathy Coriel, Kevin Corbin, Emily Cannon, Bizarre, lots of sevens, and others. So during those lettuce videos, I was testing, you know, how much bacteria is on the lettuce before and after cleaning using various methods that people do to clean vegetables. But a lot of my viewers seem to be really concerned with pesticides. This is gonna be the first of a series of videos where I test various fruits and vegetables to see if I can even detect pesticides using these test strips. Once I'm able to find a reliable source of pesticides on fruits and vegetables, then I'll start testing removal methods. So today's video is just gonna be my first try at seeing which fruits and vegetables have high levels of pesticides on them. So the first thing I did was purchase these pesticide detection strips. I'm gonna read how to use them. It says in the front of the packaging, uh, compact instant rapid pesticide residue tests, Detect organophosphorus and carbamate pesticide residues in 15 minutes. Okay, so let's open it up. So inside I have instructions, which we're gonna look at. Uh, looks like some solutions, like maybe a washing solution and the actual test strips themselves. Okay, so it says these detection cards are optimized to detect pesticide residues, carbamate and organophosphates in fruits and vegetable samples. It does list the limit of detection. So it tells you the detection limits of various pesticides to the parts per million. So it does have a list here of what it can detect. Let's see how we're supposed to test the produce. All right, so it says cut sample into small pieces, mix with the provided wash solution, one to two dilution, until the sample is damped or slightly soaked. This is to extract the pesticide residue from the sample. You may use pure distilled water to replace the wash solution. That's good to know in case I run out. Remove the protective film, dip only the white disc into the sample solution. Okay, take the card out of the sample solution and let it stand for 10 minutes. Fold the card in half and pinch the card for three minutes. Let the white disc react to the red disc during the process. I'll show you all this. Don't worry, it'll probably make more sense when we see it. And be sure to pinch the card firmly. The reaction temperature should be around body temperature. Okay, so I'm gonna to wanna to hold it. That's fine. And see if the color change is on the disc. It's best to run a control with some wash solution um, first, of course. Okay, so in looking at these um, results, they do show you that a positive high pesticide residue would be no color change or white or very light blue. Low pesticide residue is gonna be a light blue color, uh, any lighter than your control test. And a negative result, no pesticide, will be the white disc changes to azure, we'll say blue. Um, or has the same color as the control card test. Okay, in addition to testing the fruits and vegetables that I have, I found some Roundup Poison Ivy spray in my shed. I really don't remember ever using it. My husband must have bought it and used it. Um, I know we did have some Poison Ivy down the front of our property. Doesn't matter. My son and I actually have actually pulled some out. Um, so I usually don't use a spray. I usually just gear up and pull it out. Doesn't matter, that's poison ivy. Now I know this is not technically a pesticide, right? It's an herbicide, but I am gonna run a test on it just to see if I can get that color change. I'm just curious to see if something like a poison ivy spray would show up on this test. Let me show you the fruits and vegetables that I picked up. I did just go to my local Walmart. I normally don't buy my fruits and vegetables at Walmart, but I was trying to find non-organic fruits and vegetables at a decent price for this testing. And I figured Walmart is nationwide, whereas if I choose a local store to me, it may not be local to your area. So let's just stick with kind of a national chain. I did buy the organic spinach and lettuce mix, so we are gonna test this one. I meant to purchase the non-organic, but I did purchase the organic, so sorry, we are just gonna test it, I'm not gonna waste it. I picked up some non-organic strawberries, apple, nectarine, garlic, lime, and broccoli. Now the broccoli was interesting because the water was beating on it, so I'm pretty certain there's a wax residue on the broccoli. But wax residue doesn't mean pesticide, right? just means a wax residue. So let's see if I can detect 
any pesticide residue in any of these fruits and vegetables that I purchased. Now remember, if any of these are really, really, really stand out high pesticides, then I'll have another video where I start trying to remove the pesticides. But for today, we're just gonna start this baseline, just gonna test out these test strips, and just gonna kinda see if I can find a reliable source of pesticide to do further testing. Now for some results. Now I did this test on two separate days, so I do have two separate control strips, and I will show you each sample compared to the control strip that I used that day. Let's look at the day one test control. So this blue color on the bottom is what we're gonna be comparing all the other tests to. Let's look at the poison ivy spray. Now remember, this is not a pesticide, it's an herbicide, okay? And the ingredients listed on the bottle of the poison ivy spray did not match any of the detection ones on the card, but I want to test it anyway. Let's have a look. So here's the poison ivy spray next to the control. So we can definitely see a difference in color there. Now this testing using these color strips is kind of tricky because what I see visually in person may look different on camera, but I will relate to you if anything does look strange or different, okay? But to me, you can see that the poison ivy has a whitish gray color and the control has a bright blue. Let's look at the organic lettuce mix. Putting it next to our control, I'm not detecting any pesticides in the Walmart organic spinach and lettuce mix. Let's have a look at that apple. Again, the apple, I'm not detecting any sort of pesticide residue at all. Okay, now I do know there's lots of different types of apples, lots of different types of things I can try. These are just a few fruits and vegetables that I pulled as a preliminary test just to see if I could find something that would give me a nice, good, strong positive so I could continue my testing. Let's look at the broccoli. So the broccoli looks like it's a negative. It looks like it's the exact same as that control. Now remember, the broccoli had a waxy substance on it um, because the water was beating on it. So there was waxy substance on it, but apparently not any pesticides. Let's look at the strawberry. Compared to the control, they look very similar. So I'm gonna say there's no pesticides on this particular strawberry. Let's look at the lime compared to the control. Okay, now they both look very similar here. So we're not detecting any pesticides on the lime. Let's look at the garlic compared to the control. Again, these are looking very similar. I'm not detecting any pesticides at all on the garlic. Let's look at the nectarine compared to the control. Ah, this is my first sample where I'm actually seeing low level of pesticides. When you compare the two, the nectarine sample is definitely more white kind of like a gray white and not as bright blue as a control. So we can see that there's a low level of pesticide 
on that nectarine. So for my preliminary testing, while I'm trying to sort out what fruit or vegetable to use in further testing, I really didn't find anything good. I considered not even releasing this video because the only result we're really seeing that's of any interest is that nectarine had a little pesticide on it. But to me, that's not gonna be enough for me to continually test various methods. I really wanna continue using something that is a much higher positive. I'm gonna continue testing various fruits and vegetables until I find that really good high positive so we can test things like the Clean Boss um, fruit and veggie wash or vinegar or hydrogen peroxide or just soap and water. Okay, we will get there. It's just gonna take a little time and this is part of the process. If there's a particular fruit and vegetable that you're like, please test this one, put in the comments section, okay? Because I'm just gonna go shopping and I'm gonna pick up some more fruits and vegetables and we'll just retest and see how it goes. These little test strips though are really expensive. So I'm really hoping to find a good high positive soon so we can do some other testing. So I know this was a little disappointing, but stay tuned, I'll keep testing more fruits and vegetables till I find that nice high positive, and then we'll test various ways to remove those pesticides. If there is a product that you would like me to test, do me a favor and put it in the comments section. I will add it to my viewer suggestion list or you can mail me something. My mailbox address is in the description below. Just do me a favor and send me an email first. That's also in the description below so we can have a conversation about the product first. Might be something I've already tested. Might be something that I have at home in queue. But let's have a conversation about it first. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, have yourselves a great day.